Hi everyone, today I'm going to uh, do a monthly wrap-up. I haven't done one of these in a couple months, uh, but I thought I would, uh, I was in the mood. It's a beautiful day. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> and uh, I thought I'd go through the films that I have made videos on in the month of August of 2022. <clears throat> and first up will be uh, David Lean's Summertime, starring Catherine Hepburn from 1955. And this is a movie set in Venice, um, it's the beginning of David Lean's journey through the world. Uh, he, he had been a basically a British film director with British subjects. Now he's in Venice. Uh, he goes to Southeast Asia, to the Arabian deserts, to, to uh, Russia, to uh, the Irish coast. Uh, he, he doesn't ever return home again. <laughs> Uh, but Catherine Hepburn's character is on the vacation of a lifetime, so she is um, she has to go back home again. Uh, it's it's probably my favorite David Lean film. Venice looks great. The Technicolor is fantastic. Uh, this is a great Blu-ray, much anticipated uh, upgrade uh, uh, that uh, in in the Criterion Collection. Um, uh, with some really good supporting players along the way. And talking about supporting players, this is um, uh, this next film, Devil in a Blue Dress, 4K UHD. There's my new UHD TV here. I damaged my last one and I finally got a new one. The supporting players here are fantastic in, in Devil with a Blue Dress. And, but of course, you got Denzel Washington in one of his most charismatic roles, Don Cheadle in a kind of breakout performance uh, as Mouse. Uh, this is a kind of origin story for, uh, for E.Z. Rollins, who is a uh, detective from uh, Walter Mosley's series of novels. This is the first one. He wasn't meant to be, it uh, wasn't meant to be a series, but uh, uh, E.Z. Rollins be, uh, is. Uh, is hired when he's out of work. He's hired to find somebody. He, he finds some new empowerment and working for himself as a, as a detective. This is a very, uh, it's set in 1948, post-World War II era. It recreates Central Avenue in LA at that time period. And uh, it's just an absolutely uh, gorgeous UHD. And like I say, great supporting uh, players all along the way in Devil in a Blue Dress. And next up is Reisuki Hamaguchi's Drive My Car. And Drive My Car is um, won the Academy Award, I think, for Best Foreign, uh, no, you, no, you can't say that anymore, Best International uh, Film. Uh, and uh, it's about three hours long. It's, it's the culmination, I think. I've only seen two other Hamaguchi films, but uh, it's certainly, he, Hamaguchi is taking his art to a, to a whole nother level here, at least in my opinion. And uh, it, it's a story, as, as Hamaguchi's other two films were as well, it's a story about lost souls who are trying to find their way in life, trying to reconnect in life after traumatic experiences. Um, it also includes what, what uh, some of this movie is set in, in Hiroshima, where the main character, a actor, uh, stage director, uh, goes to uh, mount a production, a multilingual production of Chekhov's Uncle Vanya. And so Hamaguchi loves to uh, show the process of how things are made, how, you know, the, and we get, we get this process of of the how they rehearse the play um, and how they find their characters and as we learn in the um, in in the uh, supplements uh, this is pretty much the the this director's uh, uh, style of uh, of, of uh, rehearsal and it's pretty much the same as what Hamaguchi does as well um, so there's a good interview with him and I, I didn't mention the supplements supplements on um, on Devil in a Blue Dress, really great supplements. Some new ones with uh, director Carl Franklin and Don Cheadle. Um, <clears throat> and then another one with Walter Mosley. We see Eddie Muller uh, from 20, these are, those are from 2022, 2018. We see uh, um, 
uh, Carl Franklin being interviewed by Eddie Muller at a, one of the noir film festivals uh, in Chicago. One of the disappointments about summertime, <clears throat> hardly any <laughs> supplements here much at all, and that, that's a real disappointment. <clears throat> Next up, another criterion, this is Rouge, and this is from 1987 from director Stanley Kwan, Hong Kong film. A ghost story, uh, not a scary ghost story, but a very eerie, a romantic ghost story, to die for love. Uh, so it's set in 1937 and 1987. In 37, we see people willing to die for love. <laughs> but when we're, when we're in 1987, the characters say, you know, would we really die for love to two characters in a relationship? So we're, we're kind of seeing a romanticized view of, uh, of, of love, romance, uh, and, and kind of a, a tragic uh, romance. And then the ghost comes to 1987, and she uh, is trying to find her lost love. Uh, so I love the interplay between the past and the present. It's almost as if the characters in the present are seeing a movie from the 1930s full of this kind of uh, uh, filmic kind of romance uh, coming, to, uh, coming into, the, into the real world in 1987. Uh, it's just, just a, beautiful, uh, a beautiful film. And uh, we do have some good uh, uh, supplements on here, uh, especially a very long interview with uh, Stanley Kwan, the director of Rouge. And I'd only seen one other film by uh, Stanley Kwan. I think it's the only one available in the U.S. called Center Stage, <clears throat> playing on the uh, Criterion Channel. If anybody has access to that, highly recommend Center Stage. Uh, that came about three films after Rouge for the director. And then the next two that I have physical releases for that I uh, watched in August were part of my uh, crime films of, uh, of, of uh, 1972. And uh, one of them was Un Flick, uh, a film by Jean-Pierre Melville, starring Elaine Delon, Catherine Deneuve, uh, Richard Crenna. <clears throat> this is Jean-Pierre Melville's final film. I don't think it's one of his best, uh, but it's it's pretty good anyways. And one of the reasons it's not is because Catherine Deneuve, you know, is, is there's not enough of her in the film. But there are a couple great scenes between Delon and, and Deneuve in the film, and probably the, in 1972, the most two most beautiful actors in the world. Um, but um, uh, Delon chose to play the flick instead of the instead of the bad guy the, the gangster uh, and uh, I thought that was a mistake uh, Melville gave Don his choice between the two roles and he had played gangsters for in two other films for uh, Melville uh, so he wanted to play a cop this time uh, Richard Crenite gets to play the gangster and he's good in it he's, he's good but it seems a role that would have been uh, just tailored for for Delon um, it's uh, it it is a very moody, very atmospheric. It has a train robbery. And the other aspect that's probably it would disappoint most modern audiences is the model. There's a fantastic train robbery, fantastic in the sense that uh, it's very involved uh, and very fascinating as to how they're gonna how they're gonna rob this train, uh, but. Nobu uses some very obvious models, and it, and it really does look like models. Uh, but again, <clears throat> Nobu is not making realistic movies. These are abstract kind of uh, crime movies uh, um, that don't have a whole lot of. Uh, they're more. They, they don't have a lot of, uh, of uh, naturalistic uh, narratives. Uh, they're they're more Melville's uh, view of American. Uh, gangster films, which with which he was obsessed, and then finally, of the physical releases that I w uh, watched and commented on, another crime film from 1972, *The New Centurions*, with uh, George C. Scott, Stacy Keach, and a very gritty. This is L.A. in '72. Uh, rookie police officers uh, who uh, have who are who come out of the police academy idealistically. They're working in high crime areas. Uh, how do they maintain their humanity? 
Um, older veterans, George C. Scott playing an older, this is sort of a mentor and protege kind of relationship that these two have together. Um, trying to impart his wisdom, his philosophy. Very good George C. Scott performance here and Stacy Keach and Eric Estrada, Scott Wilson, the other rookie cops. Mostly though the film uh, centers on Stacy Keach and how, how uh, the stress of police uh, uh, a, a police work affects relationships, your marriages, and alcoholism. Um, directed by Richard Fleischer, uh, it has some really, a couple really good action sequences in it. Then I, I streamed four of uh, Michael Crichton movies uh, because I did, I did six total Michael Crichton movies in, uh, in August of 22. So I streamed Westworld uh, with Yul Brynner and Richard Benjamin and James Brolin, uh, the, the genesis, you know, of, uh, of, of the Westworld television series and really the genesis of Jurassic Park, Terminal Man, uh, which George uh, Siegel, jo Joan Hackett, uh, a Michael Creighton novel uh, that was uh, written and directed by Mike Hodges, a, a, a movie that was very much scorned, but I'm with, uh, at the, at the, scorned at the time by the critics I'm with uh, Stanley Kubrick and Terrence Malick, who went out of their way to compliment Mike Hodges uh, uh, on his film. He, he does a really good job, and he changes the final act of uh, Eternal Man is much different than the novel. I thought he did a really good job with that. My favorite, though, of all the um, Creighton movies is Coma from 1978 with Genevieve Bougeau, Michael Douglas, and Richard Widmark. Uh, this is uh, Crichton directing a book by Robin Cook, wrote and directed. He made great, the, the terrific changes to the story and his directing style. I said it in my video, uh, he, he's, he, this is sort of Alan Pakula. <laughs> this is a, like an Alan Pakula uh, conspiracy kind of uh, uh, tension, paranoia. Um, and uh, just uh, Creighton's directing style really, uh, really went to, a, uh, it really improved throughout the 1970s. And he also wrote, directed, and he wrote the novel of The Great Train Robbery, seven, 1979. Uh, really terrific. Uh, Sean Connery, Donald Southern, Leslie Ann Down, the performances are great. It's a lot of fun. It's set in the Victorian age. Uh, 1855, I believe, and it's based on a, a real-life uh, uh, train robbery. Crichton doesn't stick directly to the uh, to the uh, to the actual storyline, but um, I thought he did. He, he was very creative in his changes again, and um, it's really a lot of fun. And uh, so. I, I streamed other movies, watched other movies, but I, I can't ever remember them. I don't write them down. And the movies I remember are the movies that I, that, I, uh, that I do videos on. So if I said anything interesting about any of these movies, you, you can go back to uh, my last 10 or 12 uh, videos. They're, they'll all be there. Uh, and maybe I even said something interesting in those videos. I hope so. I, get, I, I put a lot of effort into those videos, believe it or not. So what's coming up in September? Definitely more crime, 1972 films. The Getaway with Steve McQueen, Ally McGraw, directed, uh, I think that's Ben Johnson over there, directed by Sam Peckinpah. And Fuzz, uh, another crime movie from 72, uh, based on a uh, Ed McBain 87 Precinct novel uh, with a, just a gloriously crazy cover with uh, Burt Reynolds' Playgirl uh, pose. Uh, and uh, I read somewhere that, that Reynolds uh, had it in his contract that on the movie posters of the movies he starred in, he had to be bare-chested. I don't know if that's apocryphal, <laughs> apocryphal story, but it's, it's uh, kind of amusing. I've been putting off doing The Godfather uh, for many reasons, and, and now I've, I've got it that, well, I'm going to read the novel. I've never read the novel, the Mary Puzo novel, but I did read a behind-the-scenes uh, 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 book about the, the making of The Godfather uh, that was recently published, 2021, I believe, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read the, the novel and try it because I'm reading a lot of novels that I'm that I'm uh, 
of the movies I'm watching. I mean, some Criterions are coming up, Mr. Klein, Joseph Pelosi, Elaine Delon, <clears throat> Round Midnight, Dexter Gordon, Bertrand Travenier's Round Midnight, a, uh, if you don't know Dexter Gordon, one of the great jazz legends who lived in Paris for many years. Sophia Coppola's first film, The Virgin Suicides, this is the 4K version. I'm going to be reading the book on, of this too before I watch the movie. I've seen the movie before. I think I've actually read the book as well. And then there's another Sam Peckinpah movie, Straw Dogs, um, with Dustin Hoffman and Susan George. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do a book, uh, if anybody's with me this far, I'm going to do a similar, what I read in August, I've been trying to do book, get myself to do book videos, I actually read way more, I spend far more time reading books than I do watching movies, uh, so I'm going to do a what I've read in, uh, in, in, in August 2022. And uh, in fact, I'm going to film that soon. I, I thought I would break it up, so it was, uh, over, it was 60 minutes right here. And uh, and I know movie lovers and book lovers sometimes two different camps. I'm I'm in both. I've got feet in both camps. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who listened. I do appreciate it. Comments are welcome. Take care.